This is a tale of paranoia, hidden treasure, and death. Today's story is about the Collier brothers, one of New York City's most notorious pair of siblings that will really make you want to tidy up your room. Homer and Langley Collier were born in New York City during the 1880s to a prosperous couple that had roots dating back to the landing of the Speedwell, one of the first ships to reach North America in 1620. Their father, Herman Livingston, was a prominent society doctor, and their mother, Susie Frost, was a former opera singer. They also happened to be first cousins. The boys were raised in a fashionable Manhattan neighborhood and would spend summers in Long Island at the family's sprawling country estate. Homer, the older brother by four years, studied law at Columbia University. Langley graduated with degrees in mechanical and electrical engineering. They were quiet, studious, and very introverted young men. In 1909, Herman moved his family into a beautiful three-story brownstone in Harlem in one of the most exclusive residential sections of the city. But the marriage was on the rocks, most likely exacerbated by Herman's eccentric behavior. Herman was reported to have regularly paddled a canoe down the East River down to the hospital where he worked, only to then carry it back to his home. When he suggested that the family turn their beautiful mansion into a sanatorium, Susie had enough and the couple separated. Homer and Langley, never having lived on their own, decided to stay with their mother, and Herman moved a couple miles down the road where he lived until his death in 1923. When their mother passed away seven years later, the brothers began to retreat even further in their reclusive existence. Homer and Langley were now 48 and 44, respectively, and had never lived on their own. The death of their parents left them with a fortune between $150,000 to $500,000. In today's terms, that comes to $1.8 to $6 million. Paranoid of being keepers of such a vast fortune, the brothers became very suspicious of outsider intentions, claiming that it was only their money people were after. A neighbor recounted that in 1932, Homer had told them that he was going blind and that he wouldn't be walking anymore. That was the last time anyone reported seeing him outside the house. Langley became his brother's devoted caretaker, and in an act of solidarity, or extreme delusion, decided to also cut himself off from the world. He'd be spotted sometimes at night, roaming the streets as far as Brooklyn, sifting through trash cans for scraps. He purchased oranges and peanut butter sandwiches from the all-night delicatessens. When Homer completely lost his eyesight due to hemorrhages in the back of his eyes, Langley put him on a diet of 100 oranges a week, believing it would heal his blindness. He saved every daily newspaper so that when Homer's eyesight returned, he'd be able to catch up on all of the past events. The brothers refused to seek any medical help, reasoning that they were so learned in medicine themselves that no doctor would be able to provide better care to Homer than Langley could. Several years later, Homer had become paralyzed with rheumatism, and he was confined to one room where Langley would wait on him. There, he would feed him, bathe him, dress him, read him classic literature, and play piano sonatas on one of the 14 grand pianos they owned. The Fifth Avenue house became a local oddity. Neighbors would gossip about the brothers, and constant legal battles with the city and the utility companies only drew more speculation and curiosity. Every time authorities were called to the property, neighbors would scramble for a chance to see the blue-blooded recluses. Langley's last public appearance was in 1946, when he attended a court hearing to testify against a burglary suspect. The constant gawking of neighbors, the rumors of vast wealth and curiosity from neighborhood children, it all prompted Langley to double down on the efforts to shut the world out. Living in darkness and filth, Langley and Homer existed in a labyrinth of objects and trash. The house was a maze of tunnels and booby traps, with Langley being the only one that knew how to navigate them. On March 21, 1947, police were contacted by an anonymous caller who claimed there was a dead man inside the decaying mansion. As the windows were boarded and the colliers didn't have any visitors for decades, the police suspected Langley himself as the source of the call. Upon arriving, they were soon joined by a crowd of nearly a thousand onlookers. New Yorkers drove in for miles for a chance to see what the collier mansion had kept hidden from them for nearly four decades. The police were met by a ceiling-high pile of debris blocking the front door. They were forced to smash through the windows on the second story, and there behind the cobwebs and the garbage 
was the body of Homer Collier. Surrounded by trash and junk, the police began emptying the house to the best of their abilities, managing to discard about two tons of trash onto the ground below. A coroner's exam revealed that the 61-year-old man had died of heart disease, and when Langley wasn't present at his funeral, police began a manhunt that lasted for nearly two weeks. Langley was reported to have been spotted in cities all over New York, in other states, at train stations and bus stops. A local dishwasher accused of being Langley was forced to visit a barber for a shave, just to prove he wasn't the missing Collier brother. But as police continued to clear the mansion of debris, theories circulated that Langley had been much closer this entire time. On April 9th, the search came to a gruesome end. There, buried beneath four feet of garbage in a makeshift tunnel, was the crushed body of Langley Collier. He had been killed by one of his own booby traps. The tunnels he crawled through were rigged to collapse and crush any would-be intruders, and he had accidentally set one off. Police noticed a skeletal foot, gnawed to the bone by the rats that infested the house. The half-eaten body was estimated to have been there since March 9th, a full month before the discovery. Langley had suffocated to death while trying to deliver food to Homer. The contents of the house were seemingly without end. Over 120 tons had been removed, thousands of newspapers and magazines, rusted bicycles and baby carriages, yards of fine silk and tapestries, half of a horse buggy, 25,000 books of every subject, even the chases of a Model T Ford was found in the basement. Despite all of the oddities and antiques and the decades of rumors of buried treasure and priceless artifacts, the items of any value barely auctioned for a total of $2,000. A total of 54 relatives came out of the woodwork looking for a piece of the Collier fortune, valued at $1,200,000 today. The house was ordered to be demolished that same year due to its inhabitable condition that was far beyond repair. In 1960, the vacant lot was turned into a park named in their memory. Hoarding wouldn't be studied as a serious mental disorder until the 1990s. There was no term for what the Collier brothers were to people at the time other than recluses, eccentrics, and hermits. It's a sad ending to a story of two men that were misunderstood and unable to see what their lives had become. But to Homer and Langley, they lived exactly as they wanted, alone and in total abandonment of the world. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you go clean up your room after hearing this tragic tale and I look forward to talking to you next week as always if there is something specific you want me to cover please let me know otherwise I'll try and find something interesting for you